Hey guys, this is my review for Alien Covenant, the latest Alien film in the completely ass-backwards franchise by Ridley Scott. So this film does take place after Prometheus. It answers a few questions, but holy fuck does it open up a bunch, and not just in terms of storytelling, but in how this movie works. It's about a colonization crew, a Covenant crew that has woken up from hyperspace uh, involuntarily due to a solar flare. After they recover from the solar flare, they discover a distress beacon. They go to this planet and things are not as they seem. Now, this is where it gets really tricky to start talking about this movie because to be honest, they actually did leave a lot out of the trailers, which good for them, they did a good job. A lot of horror, a lot of twists, and a lot of surprises are actually quite hidden. And you have absolutely no idea what this movie is about until you actually see it. So good on Fox for actually not ruining the fucking movie. What this film does delve into is the more so the madness of machines, the madness of AI, more so than the actual threat of the alien. The alien is still in it, but there's two different types of aliens. There's the original Xenomorph, and there's these other weird ones, the ones that we see from the dude just like having the back spasm. However, once you see it, you won't unsee this. It's Mr. Gray from the Dreamcatcher. Remember when Mr. Gray's that big weird alien puffy thing and takes the bite out of the dude on the back of the snowmobile? This is Mr. Gray. They put Mr. Gray in frickin' Alien. It is hysterical once you think about it, because then you won't unsee it. However, there are some interesting moments. Michael Fassbender is once again the top tier actor in this series. He's fantastic. He has a really cool arc. He is probably the only character who has an arc in this movie. Let's be honest, everyone else is a meat shield. He pretty much took the idea of what happened with Prometheus and just made everyone almost a potential target. And what's kind of interesting too is that this crew isn't a crew of commendable people. These aren't people who are set for danger. These are just regular humans who are completely fucked. And that's the thing. The writing is not as bad. It's done by John Logan who's proved himself to be a competent writer. He's done films like Slash Samurai, Gladiator. He also did Skyfall. However, for this one... There are some issues here and there. A few of them I'll talk about after I've given my rating of this movie, but he does still lead us on this idea of more questions than answers. And to the point where there actually does need to be a question, because I don't think this shit will be solved in, next, in the next movies, because it kind of just leaves it to not be answered. The whole idea of the world is actually really cool. There are a lot of moments in this film that connect with Prometheus, with the idea of what Covenant is, as well as the two preludes that we saw. However, this is something that I'm going to be quite honest about. That prelude that they showed, the last dinner of the crew with James Franco, that has more character than anyone on the crew does aside from Michael Fassbender. Michael Fassbender is as good in that preview as he is in this movie. However, no one is as good in this movie as they were in that preview. Being straight up honest, the crew is totally expendable. There are some moments maybe here and there with the main girl, but otherwise they are totally interchangeable and you don't give a shit about any of them because they start dying before you can even think of doing that. Alien Covenant definitely is a much more straightforward, more focused narrative, but there are more plot holes than there were just unanswered questions. It doesn't have the pretentiousness of David Lindos writing from Prometheus, but it does have a lot of holes and a lot of issues that Skyfall was full of once you started to analyze them. However, they are much more visible this time around. The horror is cool, but at the same time, it's not the best shot. The alien, I am going to straight up say this, does not look the greatest in CG. There are some shots where Ridley does hide it, like he tried to hide it before when he was originally doing it as an actual dude in a suit, and that works. But it doesn't really connect to you when you see it in CG. It just doesn't have the same feeling that we've always had. So that takes away from it a little bit. And also, the film is definitely not as well shot and the music is definitely not as good as it was in Prometheus. They even make comments about it, and it's kind of odd when you're referencing much better music 
in a previous film. So in the end, while Alien Covenant is a success in terms of making sure it doesn't piss off people as much as it did with Prometheus, it still has a lot of shortcomings. There are a lot of fucking stupid people. These people are dumb. They're almost as dumb as the Prometheus people. However, they have kind of an excuse because they're not scientists, but at the same time, there's a lot of stupid shit that happens in this movie. So while I am detracting from a lot of issues, there are some things that I would like to rewatch just to find out what it means. I did enjoy this more than Prometheus in the sense of a narrative and a story. Visually, hell no. Visually, Prometheus will kick this movie's ass any day of the week. So in the end, while I'm on the fence about it, I will give it a 4 out of 7. It was really hard to go between that or a 3. Really, really hard. I've been thinking about it ever since I got home. There's basically those numbers. But now that I have given you my review, I am now going to give you my questions. Now, please do not watch this part because there are a lot of them. But just don't, if you don't want spoilers, don't watch past this part. You done? You gone? All right. Let's see if you guys can answer these fucking questions. When David and Elizabeth Shaw landed on the alien homeworld, why did they destroy them all? Was that David's choice? Was that Shaw's choice? If that was Shaw's choice, then why did David do it and then kill Shaw? Why was Shaw killed by David? Why did David kill Shaw when he loved her and respected her? Sure, he was losing his mind, but it still didn't make any sense as to what he did to do her. If David was so hell-bent on destroying humanity, why did he stay on the planet? The ship clearly looked like it hadn't crashed. Why did he bring Shaw there? If Shaw landed the, the ship then killed her, what did he do to Shaw? How did Shaw's body not be seen by several people who walked in the room and s could have seen her body? How was the second face catcher able to gestate an alien into a dude that had only been on his face for less than 18 seconds? Why was it when they were on the ship they led this alien on a really weird goose chase through all the tunnels into that hangar and then they got rid of every single means of machinery they would need to use to survive on the planet instead of just leading it towards an airlock? How did David get those little face huggers into a little gel cap? How did he expect to break them out? Isn't that usually what you put dead things in in an encapsulated seal? How did David and Walter come to the agreement of what to do? How did David get those things inside Walter's body? How did David and, Co and Walter correlate? Biggestly, the biggest question is, why did David destroy the Prometheans when that was possibly Shaw's idea, but then he kills Shaw, and then he doesn't go back to Earth, yet he has the means to, but he has the wants to? And maybe we'll get some answers in the following movies, or maybe we'll get some answers in some fan theories, but we'll see. Either way, guys, that's all from me. I hope you enjoyed this review. And I uh, hope those questions give you some uh, some things to ponder about. Anyways, see you guys next time.